Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Um, I want to let you know that we are delivering 100 meals this week. Isn't that? So those of you that volunteer to deliver meals, you can pick them up um, in the back of the church. And then any remainders that we have, we opened it up to the community to drive through and to get a to-go um, Thanksgiving dinner. So our appreciation to the mission committee. Um, also, there are envelopes for you this morning for you to grab. If you're wondering what they are, they're your offering envelopes for 2021. But in addition to that, it is the Advent Bulletin, Blue Christmas Bulletin, Christmas Eve Bulletin, and it's your devotional for Advent. Um, tomorrow, actually, the Ag Council is going to meet and we'll discuss whether we'll continue with in-person worship or not, because uh, as you know, the numbers are rising in New Jersey. Would you please rise and join me for the call to worship? In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness is all of God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in music and prayer. Our opening hymn is number 131, We Gather Together. Thank you. 
fell before Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This week I read a wonderful, heartwarming story by Andy Cook. And he tells um, of his friend Pam. And it seems that Pam worked in Chicago. And every day on her way to work, she would um, go by a heavy set, middle aged woman in a shabby coat who was asking for spare change. And she was standing in front of a little brick church. And she said on most days she would give her spare change. But um, after about a year of this, she one day disappeared and she wondered what had happened to her. And then one beautiful day, she saw her standing in front of the church again. And of course, she reached into her pocket, was ready to give her some money. And the woman was like, I don't want your money. I want to say thank you. Thank you for helping me because I have now found a job. And in a bag, she pulled out um, individually wrapped donuts and gave the woman a donut in gratitude for what she had done. And it was her intention to stand there all day and hand out donuts to people who had supported her through those difficult days. Isn't that a great story? So she was like the 10 lepers. She returned to give thanks. What distinguished the, I am rushing ahead. So in today's story, we hear that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem walking between Samaria and Galilee. And as he enters the village, he is met by 10 lepers who hope that Jesus will heal them. I think Jesus' reputation preceded him. And I am sure they were hoping and praying that the stories of Jesus were true. And lepers, as you know, were outcasts from society and they were expected to behave in specific ways, which was laid out in the book of Leviticus. The diseased one was to appear before the priest, and if the priest declared that they had leprosy, the leper was to wear torn clothes and let the hair on their head hang loose. They would cover their upper lips and cry, unclean, unclean, which they approach others. Um, lepers were not allowed to be more than 50 feet near someone, and that included their own families, because basically when you have leprosy, you can no longer see your families. So they stayed 50 feet away because they knew that if they didn't, people would throw rocks at them. The lepers in today's story would have been at least 50 feet from Jesus, and I think they would have been screaming at Jesus to be healed so they could be heard. And I imagine that Jesus too, if he is a distance from them, would shout back to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they were going, they were healed of their disease. One of the ten, a Samaritan, realizing that he had been healed, came back to Jesus, 
praising God with a loud voice. He fell at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Jesus wonders, what happened to the other nine? But more importantly, what happens to us when we find ourselves in a stressful situation? Are we as likely to thank God? In the midst of illness, the stress of overwork or unemployment, conflicts with family, friends, or strangers, in the midst of pain, anger, fear, or a pandemic, can we still say thank you to God for all that is right in our life and in our world? What distinguished the one leper from the other nine was his ability to thank Jesus for what he had received. And then Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. He is the only leper that is told, your faith has made you well. Jesus implies that he is not only physically healed, but he is made whole. He is restored to health in mind, body, and spirit. A lifestyle of thankfulness leads to a lifestyle of wellness. The tenth leper, in the words of Barbara Brown Taylor, fouled his heart instead of his instructions and accepted his life as a gift and gave it back again. Gratitude rose up from somewhere so deep inside him that it turned him around, changed his direction, led him to Jesus, and made him well. Zachary L.T. in a Psychology Today article says, one of the most powerful tools for staying healthy is gratitude. There are always things to be grateful for, even now. And gratitude reminds us how special, beautiful, and fortunate our lives are, even under stressful, or hazardous conditions. And he gives three examples of things we have to be grateful for. First, that the pandemic is unusual. You know, this is the first pandemic in my lifetime. I don't know about you, but I am feeling really grateful about that, and I am counting on it being the last one. And that we have an infrastructure in place um, where people from around the world can work together on a vaccine and share information. How lucky are we that that can happen? It's not only the best minds in the U.S., but throughout the world. Second, gratitude for the heroes of healthcare who put their own safety at risk to care for total strangers simply because it is what they do. You know, I often think about the healthcare workers and the first responders. You know, when they signed up to do what they did, they didn't sign up to die. You know, that wasn't an expectation with the job. You go to work, you come home, you really didn't worry about risking your life for a virus. And I mean, I am so grateful to them that they show up. And I am also really grateful to them that they show up for the people who haven't worn masks, who end up in the intensive care units, and they care for them anyway. That is a gift. Thank you, thank you. Gratitude for loved ones and a time of forced perspective. 
to consider what really matters to us. I know for me, my prayer life has really improved through this, that I take more time to be still and know that I am God. Because I have more time where I'm not running here or there to spend more quality time with God. There have been a number of wonderful stories of healing because of the pandemic. Um, I don't know if you read in the paper or heard on the news the story of the two women Holocaust survivors who discovered each other because of an online worship service. The pandemic has allowed them a healing of memories and an opportunity for gratitude. So there's a story in the Associated Press, and it talks about a Ruth Brandspiegel and Israel Sasha Eisenberg. Decades ago, their families who came from the same city in Poland escaped the Nazis, crossed into the Soviet Union, and were sent to different labor camps in Siberia, where Eisenberg was born. They later met at a displaced persons camp in Austria, where they became close friends. They last saw each other in 1949, before losing track of each other. More than 70 years later, Brand Spiegel, now a Philadelphia resident, heard a familiar name being called out in a Yom Kippur service late in September over Zoom. And it was in her son's synagogue in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And she says, I said to myself, Sasha, I know there's a lot of Eisenbergs, but Sasha Eisenberg, how could that possibly be? So she called her son Larry Sprambeagle, a cantor at the East Brunswick Jewish Center, and asked him to help her, help her check. And he did, and indeed, this was his mom's childhood friend. And she says she didn't even know that she was in America. Um, it w and it had been 70 years since she was a child. So she says, so I called it a miracle because I don't see any other way that humans can organize such an event and make everything come together. So eventually what happens is um, after they end up in the Siberian camp and then they end up in Poland, the Eisenbergs migrate to Israel. And then later in 1964, they moved to Brooklyn. Meanwhile, the Brandspiegel's family had moved to Philadelphia in 1952. So these two long lost friends have lived only 60 miles apart for decades. And on October 3rd of this year, they were finally reunited. Bram Spiegel's son hosted a social distance gathering at his home in East Brunswick under a sukkah, a temporary shelter used to observe the seven days and nights of the Jewish holiday sukkah. Both of these women call their reunion a miracle. What are the odds that this woman would be watching her son's Zoom service on the day that her friend's name would be mentioned? I mean, this is, it just is amazing. And it turned out to happen on the Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the Jewish year. And like the one leper, they stopped to give God thanks. Mel B. Beattie says this, Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. And I would say that was the case with these two women. 
I'll repeat it. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. So in today's scripture, we are told that 10 lepers were healed, but only one returned to give thanks. And the one who returned was not only physically healed, but he was healed in body and spirit. May we too practice gratitude and, may, and be made well. Amen. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to God for all good gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve, we thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. For the brave and the courageous who is patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all the valid seekers after a cure for COVID-19 and those on the front lines who care for the sick, we thank you, Lord. For those who have lost loved ones during the past year, for our nation as it mourns under 250,000 people lost to COVID, for the communion of saints, in all times and in all places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we thank you for the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed. this time we will bless our gifts. Let us pray. There are no limits to the gifts you have given us, gracious Lord. Now we return thanks to you for these gifts, and we bring these tokens to you, asking for your blessing on givers and gifts. Help these gifts and givers to be your witnesses throughout the world. Amen. Would you please rise for our closing hymn? It's number 694. Come, ye thankful people, come.
Well, the one thing I can guarantee you today is that it's going to be a Thanksgiving like no other for all of us here. So my wish, my prayer for you is that this is a week filled with unexpected blessings and that we each take the opportunity to give God gratitude for all that is right and well in our world. So go in peace this day, celebrating God's goodness, and know that that goodness goes with you out into the world. Amen. Amen.